instead of you to do manual highlighting for the current, you know, uh, rows like this, so you can actually do something very dynamic. Can you see? You would have to do it manually and all of that. So this is not really cool. Let's come over here and look at this. So right now, anywhere I click gets highlighted. As I step out, can you see? This is how this looks like. So let me show you how to actually create this. So that's any rows you clicked on would be highlighted across the column. So let's do it. So over here, we will come over here. To get this off, you don't have to do it manually again. You can just select everything, go over to this particular top ribbon and uh, locate this particular clear and click on clear formats. That is gone. Can you see that now? So what we are going to do is just to make sure we some kind of um, highlights and uh, control shift down arrow to highlight everything so once we are done doing this the next thing we do is to go over to the top go to home and from home conditional formatting let us go to new rule right here and over here you click on this particular use formula to determine which cell gets formatted so what i'm going to do is to actually type in equals and uh, cell so open brackets inside here i'm going to type in row then close and you close this and you actually say equals row again, open and close bracket. So once you are done, identify the color you want to actually have for it. Let's go to fill color and uh, maybe want to choose something like this, right? So we go with this and we click on OK. Then we click on OK from here. So nothing still happened. It's not really working yet. This time around, we have to actually go over here and say it did what? It did code. So, or, sorry, view code, rather, go to view code. So under view code here, all you have to do is to make sure you click on this particular part and actually change it to worksheet. So let us type in active cell dot calculate. That is all. So once you are done, go ahead and close this. So now can you see, this is what you have right here. Very simple, right? Right here, we have employees data, but this particular data do not have any ID. So we want to generate unique ID for every single employee. So how do we do it? It's very simple. So the first thing you need to do is to actually highlight this particular column and uh, check how many, you know, how many rows we have. So we have 201. So minus this particular one, that is 200. Let us use this particular function, sequence. So sequence, type in 200 here and go ahead and close this. And that is gonna give you this. If we actually go down now, we have it up to 200. But what if we want to actually make it look like an ID? How do we do that? So what I'm gonna do is to actually come here now and uh, inside the book quotes, I'm gonna type in this EP, EMP for employees and uh, we concatenate it with this one. Then maybe you wanna actually generate huge number for every employee, but it will, very, it will be very unique. So you can actually type in here, plus maybe two, three, four. So something like this. Can you see what it is? So every single thing here is very unique, but there'll be a problem when you want to actually convert this particular data into a table. So what do you do? You control T and uh, let's do this. Can you see right now? It gives us this particular spill error. So if you must actually convert this into a table, let me control Z. What you need to do is to highlight this column Control C and right click, then paste as value first. Then you can now do this. But right now, just note that the formula is actually gone. It's now static. That is what you need to understand. All right, let us create something like this that you can see on my screen. It's very dynamic. If I actually add new data here, the more I data, the more this one gets updated automatically. So how do we do this? Let me just copy a few of this one from here. Let's go with this particular part, right? So I'm going to drop it over here with Control V. So here is my product. So over here is the ID. So to generate dynamic ID for right now, I'm going to actually put one here. So once I have one right there, I'm going to do equals using my if function to actually check if this one is equals to blank. If it is blank, give me blank. Otherwise, take this number and add one to it. Hit my enter key. I now have something like this. 
So right away, it wouldn't be dynamic if I actually type in something here, it will not work. So what can I do instead? Just go ahead and actually highlight this one, control T to convert it into a table. And anything you put right here right now would actually make this to be very dynamic. Can you see it right now? This is what you need to do. If you look at this particular number, so there are some highlights on it. So what you might be tempted to do is actually going over here and come over to this particular part and uh, give a highlight here and click on this one and do the same thing right here. This is wrong. What you have to do is to do it once and do it over and over again. So make sure the first one or any one you want to highlight, just go ahead and give it the color you want like this and step here and your F4 key will keep on giving you, you know, the previous action that you have actually taken. This is what we have right here. It's not actually restricted to colors alone. You can do it for like, maybe you come over here, use some kind of uh, change this one to red here, red, and you bold it. So let's go over here now. Can you see? So the last one is bold. The red is actually a color before bold. So that one will not come up. But when we actually start doing this now, it's bolding it for us. It's only bring back your last action and apply it to your data. Do you understand this right now? All right, let us learn how to generate random number without you doing something like this. You come over here, you start generating numbers like this. This is not going to actually make it look you know, some kind of efficient. So what you can do right now is to highlight the area where you want to generate the number and put on equal sign and uh, you type in round between. So round between will be looking for what? Round between will be looking for the minimum number and the maximum number. The minimum number, we want to put it at 10 and the maximum, we want to put it at 500, right? Go ahead and close and hold your control key before you hit the enter key and that populates this for you. Remember, every single time this particular place gets refreshed, what you have is different set of you know random numbers. So if you wanna actually keep it static, all you have to do is to make sure you highlight, you control C and you right click over here, you go ahead and paste as value. So if this worksheet gets uh, updated or refreshed, nothing happens. This is how you can generate random number. Next again is for you to actually look at how to clean this particular data. It's very, very important and it's something very simple. So maybe you might be tempted to actually come over here and do something like this, you know, one after the other. So before you can get what you really want, this is gonna be some kind of time wasting for you. you can see, I can do a lot. So I just do wall and uh, this is crazy. So what can you do instead? Just go ahead and highlight the range where you have your data, you know, so once you have done that, you control H and over here, you put a single space inside this particular place where my cursor is actually blinking, a single space and you come over here, don't put anything right here, which means replace the space with nothing. Then replace all gives me something like this. Do you see this right now? This is something very simple. All right, if you look at this particular part right now, it's something very dynamic. Retrieving data from here with ease. Without XLOOKUP, VLOOKUP, index and match, we can actually do this with a different function. So what do you do? Look at this. If I actually put one here right now, it retrieves this particular part for us. If I put two right here again, it retrieves this particular part here for us without any X lookup and other lookup function. So I'm gonna clear everything away from here. There is nothing here. So what I'm gonna do now is actually highlight this particular part to here, control C and come over here and right click and paste what? Paste as value. So I maintained my you know formatting. So once we have done that, we wanna put an ID here like ID one right here. So with our ID one here, what do we do? So there is a function called gets. I think it's G, uh, DG, okay, the get, right? So this particular, the get is looking for database. Where is your database? Our database starts from here. So hold your control shift, arrow to the right, arrow down, and uh, make sure you do your F4 key to actually lock it down. Can you see? We have locked it down right now. The next thing is actually the field. So which field are you looking for? 
looking for this particular field right here, comma, it's now asking for criteria. So for criteria, we can actually give it this very one. So for this one, we have to lock it down because we don't want it to move. F4 key, we can now go ahead and close and hit our enter key. It retrieved this one for us, which is this very one right here. I can just decide to go ahead and copy this across, just change this one to date. Over here, we have this one to be date. And this is what it is. So every single time we make a change of this one to like a six here, now the six is retrieving something from here for us. This is how easy this could be. So I believe you enjoyed this particular video. It's something very simple. If you do enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up, right? So let us do something else. All right, if you can see my screen right here, if I actually type something here right now and it goes beyond like the current cell I selected and I hit my enter key, it automatically expand the cell and make the text to fit in. So let me try it over here again. Can you see? Hit my enter key. I have something like this. At default, Excel does not give you that feature. So if I type in something that goes beyond here and I hit my enter key, it does not actually auto fit for me. So how do we actually solve this problem? Although it's not a problem, it's actually something we want nearly. Right click and go to view code. So from view code, you are here, convert this one into worksheet. And over here, type in sales dots entire column. Can you see entire column here? Then we want to do dot auto fit. So we use auto fit here. This is the auto fit right here. This is all we need to do. Let's close. And over here, we type something in. We type something like this experience. Can you see it now? So, but mind you, if you use this particular feature, you have to save your work as macro enable. That is just it. You've just wrote your first macro if you've not done that before without knowing. All right, over here we have the first name, the last name, and what we want to have next is the full name. So let me show you an easy way to concatenate. So put an equal sign here and do text join. So with the text join function right here, it's looking for the limiter. The limiter should be space. So double quotes, put a space in it and have it closed two commas and actually bring in your first text comma and the second text right here then if i hit my enter key right now i should actually have this so we are good to go do you see it all right if you enjoyed this don't forget to actually hit the subscribe button because this is gonna actually make your excel you know uh usage to be some kind of very swift so see you in my next video